This is Penny from Pennyless Parenting, and I'm showing you how to make Korean rice cakes. I'm not going to say the Korean name because I don't know how to pronounce it. This is part two after steaming. Okay, so take it out of the steamer. And it doesn't look like much. And right now it's very, very hot. So hot that you can't really touch it so easily. I'm going to take some sesame oil and put it on my rolling pin. Ooh, that's a lot. That's okay. And now my, my rolling pin is all greased. And now, using my rolling pin to smash it. And then, the parchment paper to bring it together. Um, right now, I have to make a dough out of this, but it's very hot. I need to do it while it's hot. Ooh. Oh, that's hot. Now, I'm gonna just bash it with this. that's flying away. Basically I'm pounding it with this until it's cool enough, until it's also a dough and until it's cool enough for me to handle it with my hands. And until it's crumbs are actually all one unified unit. Be careful the crumbs don't fly too much. This is why you want a decently cleaned area first. Parchment paper is ripped, so much for that. But, okay. Woo, that's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. It's hot. Yeah. But if you don't mind touching something hot, more with this. I have no idea why you're supposed to bang it. Maybe it's just so that way you can play with it while it's hot. But the original instructions had a mortar and pestle, so this is what I'm using instead. And it works just great. If you notice, ooh, yeah, make sure all your parchment paper's out of that. You don't want to be making parchment paper cakes. And if you want to, you could put some more sesame oil on your hands now. See, it's starting to go from that powdery stuff to an actual dough. More of that parchment paper. You know what? You don't have to use parchment paper if you don't want to. See, especially because it's just making trouble for me now. Okay, so now what you do basically is just, you have a dough and just collect all the pieces that are not really part of the dough and just gather it into your dough by kneading them in. And just keep on kneading and kneading until you get all those last crumbs. Um, you want to work it so you've got a good, nice dough. And work it some more. Work it some more. It's actually a dough that's very easy to work with. See, I'm gathering all those last bits of those crumbs. And it's like, right now it should have the consistency of a nice Play-Doh. See, I'm just banging it with a rolling pin. I don't even know if you need to. I, again, as I said, I have no idea why you hit this with a rolling pin or a mortar and pestle. But, hey, it's supposed to be pounded, so pound it I will. And uh, who knows, maybe that's what makes the texture as awesome as it, as it is. Um, so now I'm breaking it up into smaller pieces. Um... As you see, I divide it into four, and then into another four, and then uh, 
each of those pieces I'm breaking into two, but it really doesn't matter. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because I'm able to make sure that I have more even pieces so that way at the end I have more or less even snakes. Um, but you really could just play by ear and pull off a piece and roll it out or whatever. I um, You could roll it so many different ways. Um, sometimes I like to roll it first by um, just squeezing it out between my fingers so I have a little bit of a snake and then rolling it out some more between my hands and then going to the counter. Um, sometimes I just roll it out from the counter to start with. Sometimes I do it entirely in my hands. There's no rule at all. And the only thing you should know is if your hands or your counter start getting a little bit sticky, um, just put a little more sesame oil on it and it also gives it flavor and it also stops from sticking. Um, so yeah, just say, so, um, when my hands aren't in the shot, that's because I'm busy putting oil on them because it was starting to get a little sticky. There's no defined rule about how much oil you have to use. Um, I just do it whenever I find a need to do it. Um, so just keep on rolling, rolling, rolling. Make your snake, make your snake. There's no, as again, there's no official rule how you want to do this. They could even all be different lengths because you don't cook the snakes whole. Um, these rice cakes you cut up either into like two inch pieces or uh, even like little coins depending which recipe you're making. So the purpose of making them all the same length is really just for vanity. But if it breaks like that, who cares? Because at the end, it's going to be cut up anyhow. What you do want is to have the pieces more or less um, even width so that way they cook in the same amount of time. And uh, this is fun. You get a good workout. I mean, at this point in I'm making the video, I've made, this is my fourth batch that I've made in um, the last few days. So my shoulders are now feeling it. Um, but, you know, good exercise. Um, something you should be aware of if you're watching this video and following my recipe, the amount of dough that you're seeing here is actually a double recipe. A single recipe will make half this amount. I am just uh, doing a double recipe, but if you want to do more than a double recipe, make sure your steamer is very big because, um, yeah, my steamer that I show here will only fit half of one at a time. So, yeah, I'm speeding it up because, come on, there's only so much time you want to watch me roll it out and roll it out and roll it out. I mean, it's not actually boring, it's fun, but you watching it is probably going to be a little bit boring. Um, I would have cut it out entirely, except my son said it would be better for you to watch it sped up, so that's what you're doing, because my son knows all about making videos, and I don't know anything. My son Lee, he's only 12 and a half, and he's very good, and he actually is making this video for me. I'm just doing this voiceover. I have no idea how to make videos. I know how to make food. I know how to make blog posts. I know how to make my website, um, but he knows how to do videos. And he's only 12 and a half, and he's an amazing artist also, and an amazing photographer. And I'm just blabbing about how amazing he is, because he really is that amazing. And if not for him, I would not be making videos. He's just the one who tells me to make videos. And and he's rec he recorded this whole thing anyhow. Yeah, I mean, of course, how can I miss that part? Because I do not have three hands. I cannot record while I'm also rolling things out. I mean, three hands would be useful. I would be able to, like, do a lot more things, but unfortunately, I only have two hands. So, um, yeah. But I have, like, four hands when I count my son. And if I count all my kids, that means I have ten hands. But eight of them are making trouble <laughs> while the other two are... No, maybe four of them are making trouble while the other two are... Other four are doing some important stuff. Um, so here we have it all. And my son is watching and laughing. Say hi. Hi to everyone, Lee. Hi, everybody. He's an awesome kid, and soon he's going to be an awesome young adult. I mean, he's a young adult. Soon he's going to be an awesome grown-up, and I can't wait for him to grow up and start to cook. But he doesn't think he's going to cook because he thinks cooking is just for girls. So tell him, everyone, that cooking is also for boys. Because if you want yummy food, you got to learn how to make it yourself. Right, Lee? No. No? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm putting him on the spot now because I don't want to do this voiceover again. So he's going to be able to delete this. Ha ha ha, I'm evil. Um, but yeah, this is how you make this delicious Korean rice cake. And um, something I just want to point out, um, you use glutinous rice cake. Oh yeah, I've mentioned, he wants me to tell you that if it breaks, it's fine, but I already mentioned that. He just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I, I, I like to laugh at, pe at myself and at other people, and that's cool, because laughing makes the world go round. And um, what I want to say is, you, I'm using for this uh, sticky rice flour, um, other people have mentioned something about soaking the rice first. No, I just take short grain rice flour, stick it in my grain grinder dry, and use it as is for this recipe. I do not do any soaking or any weird thing like that. And even though it's called sticky rice flour or sweet rice flour or glutinous rice flour, it has no sugar in it, no gluten in it. It is literally just short grain white rice ground up. Not soaked, not nothing. And here you have it. Ta-da! Isn't that beautiful?